Well, hello, it's Bruce Williams again, and today I want to present part 11 on my series of the Selected Gross Pathology of the Cat, in which we're going to talk about the musculoskeletal system. As I do at the beginning of all of my lectures, I want to thank those friends and colleagues who provided me great images over the years, which allow me to put these lectures together. Let's start with some of the congenital diseases of the musculoskeletal systems in cats. And this is a fun one. If you've ever been down to Ernest Hemingway's house in Key West, you might have seen some of these cats. And if you can count to six, that's even better because this cat has six toes on its front foot. The condition is known as polydactyly because Americans, like oddities um, of any type, there is an American polydactyl breed of cat where the cats have six or even seven toes on their front feet, five or six on the hind feet. It's obviously uh, more of a cosmetic defect, doesn't cause any problem for these particular animals. Now a congenital problem that's a genetic defect that does cause significant problems for cats and for sheep is a condition known as osteogenesis imperfecta. It's been well researched in humans in which the defect is largely in the genes COL1A1 and COL1A2, which um, basically are used in the production of type 1 collagen, which we see in the bones and the joints. So you have defective collagen here. If you take a look at the normal control here and then this rib plate here, you can see multiple rib fractures in this kitten, which may have occurred actually during parturition. Don't confuse those with the costochondral junctions, which go down here. But all of these are fracture calluses. And there are a lot of conditions, we've talked about them in other lectures, which um, produce a reduced quantity of bone, anything that causes osteopenia, uh, such as starvation, limited mobility, corticosteroids, all produce reduced quantity of bone. But osteogenesis imperfecta is the only disease that produces both a reduced quantity and reduced quality of bone. Uh, osteoblasts in this con condition produce far less amounts of type 1 collagen, and it is abnormal, as well as osteonectin. They produce diminished amounts of osteonectin. Uh, mild forms reduce, uh, result in, in fairly normal collagen produced in reduced amounts, where the severe forms, as we see here, result in defective collagen, type 1 collagen, that can't be cross-linked. There's no abnormalities in the cartilage because the collagen that's in cartilage is type 2 cartilage. Young animals have cortical bone that looks like woven bone and there is a delay in compaction and there's much less trabecular bones in this, in this bone than in the normal control. It also affects teeth as many of these uh, uh, bone diseases do. The teeth are often sort of pink because you can visualize the pulp through the very thin dentin and enamel. Uh, dentinal tubules are very short, um, tortuous, or even absent because the odontoblasts are affected just like the osteoblasts are. And uh, occasionally these young animals will fracture their teeth. Here's another picture from a kitten uh, just a tragic story of multiple fractures, and you can see how thick these bones uh, are due to callus formation. Here's another congenital defect that really doesn't uh, cause much problems. We've looked at this particular defect in other species, such as cattle and pigs. And this is a condition in which the bones actually uh, accumulate a particular pigment. The, the disease is known as congenital erythropoietic porphyria and uh, affected cattle, pigs, and cats have elevated levels of circulating porphyrins. There is interruption in these animals 
um, of the production of the heme molecule for hemoglobin. So you get these excessive levels of, of uh, porphyrins, which eventually will settle out in a number of organs, including the bones and the teeth. And they are this bright orange brown color, which actually fluoresces under ultraviolet light. They excrete a lot of porphyrins in their urine as well, which will turn very brownish orange if exposed to sunlight. There's no histologic defect. It's a perfectly normal bone that is just pigmented and a different color. And it can be very dramatic in cats with this condition when you see the orange teeth. Our next disease is an acquired disease, and we are looking at the back end of the skull the, and the cervical spine of a cat. You can see that on all of these bones, there is tremendous uh, exophytic periosteal new bone growth, which almost results in fusion of this part of the spine. And this is the result of vitamin A toxicosis in cats. Vitamin A is an interesting uh, vitamin in its effects on the uh, musculoskeletal system because it has different effects in different species and within cats there are different effects within kittens and within older animals. Older animals, uh, excess of vitamin A, which they often get from eating a lot of liver, because vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin, it's stored in the liver, so animals that eat a lot, a lot, a lot of liver can get vitamin A toxicosis. And what it does is it stimulates osteoblastic production of new bone. Now, it's especially severe in the cervical spine. Nobody's ever figured out why that area. But the theory is that because there's so much motion um, here, because the cats are always licking themselves and moving their their neck while they're doing this, that, that uh, this might irritate the periosteum, stimulate uh, osteoblastic bone formation at a higher rate here than in other parts of the body. Now in kittens, it causes degeneration and necrosis of chondrocytes and osteoblasts, often resulting in premature closure of the growth plate. Ultimately, this turns into a very painful uh, proposition for the cat. Besides the fusion, you have sclerosis of exit points for spinal nerves resulting in pain and severe muscular atrophy of the muscles that are innervated by these particular nerves. In young calves, um, it, as opposed to young cats, it causes more osteoblastic uh, growth production or production of bone, and you can see sclerosis of the exit points for the optic nerves and blindness because it pinches the optic nerves there. Uh, lions, um, another form of cat, obviously, it has been reported to cause uh, excessive osteoblastic bone formation within the cranium, resulting in compression of the cerebrum and cerebellum and cerebellar herniation. So with vitamin A, you sort of need to know what species and what age you're looking at because it doesn't act the same way across the board with uh, all these species. And, and here's another great picture. Most of these pictures are old. We don't see this much anymore. Um, great picture from 1963 showing all of the uh, periosteal new bone formation. Some of these bones you actually see excessive trabecular bone formation, osteosclerosis at all. But if you notice, it's usually most severe at areas of motion around joints, for example. So probably has to do with the motion and the uh, production of bone to give us the characteristic lesions. Um, here is a, a great picture of the, you'll hear the term bossing of the skull. Um, this is a little cat with alpha manosidosis and one of the unrewarding things about the, uh, uh, about a lot of these lysosomal storage diseases, they sort of show a lot of the same external 
uh, symptoms grossly. So when I see something like this, this bossing of the skull in, a, in an animal that's failing and just not doing well, um, I always think lysosomal storage disease, I generally can't pinpoint. It could be mucopolysaccharidosis or a number. They're not even very rewarding histologically because the accumulation of the material due to a genetic defect often starts in mesenchymal cells like fibroblasts and, and uh, uh, various types of leukocytes. They still all look the same, so you need to generally go and get the genetic testing for all these. They're available through a number of veterinary schools. Oh, these are just fun here. Um, this actually is a cat named Franken Louie um, because he is known as a Janus cat. He was the oldest living Janus cat. He lived to be 15 years of age. Um, and he has a condition known as diprosopus um, or two faces. Um, only this face had an esophagus. This was the face that he uh, uh, he ate through and he meowed through. And this one was sort of a, a silent uh, uh, partner. Hey, I'm sorry for the uh, multiple interruptions on this tape. It seems like everybody's calling and coming in the office today, even when I have the door shut. Um, okay, so back to Frank and Louie. Janice Cat died at 15. Uh, most of these animals with this type of defect um, do not live much past kittenhood. No, these cats do not have two brains. They are, are one brain. It seems to function pretty well. Just, uh, just two sort of conjoined faces. Now, if you told me that this was a vitamin A deficiency, um, I could probably uh, entertain that thought because of the periosteal new bone growth here. There's not a lot of motion on top of the skull. This is another acquired defect. This is something we don't see much anymore, like a lot of these uh, diseases. And this is uh, multiple osteochondromas. They may proceed to osteosarcomas. That might be what happened here. And they were associated with feline retrovirus. Uh, back in the day when uh, the retrovirus was thought to be a couple different viruses, this one was called feline sarcoma virus. Turned out that um, it just was a Focma positive variant of the feline retrovirus. But uh, the retrovirus would stimulate osteoblasts um, in the flat bones, um, generally arising uh, in areas of the periosteum. And uh, viral particles were found in some of these osteoblasts. Um, they're very different than osteochondromas that we see in dogs. Um, in the dog, it's sort of just a little bit of the growth plate, which has been split off and left behind by the bone undergoing appositional growth. In dogs, they often uh, course or they often uh, are contiguous with the marrow cavity. Um, but in these masses in the cat simply arise, the bony masses arising from the periosteum of flat bones. Just a couple more as we talk about neoplasms in, uh, in the cat. Um, cats are, are well known, and I'm going to talk about metastatic neoplasms before I talk about osteosarcoma because they're probably more common. Cats are well known for a metastasis of certain uh, certain neoplasms to the bones, but the uh, the big thing that I want to put forth is that we don't know much about the metastasis rate of a lot of the common neoplasms to bone because people simply don't look. You can't go through and cut every single bone, and very few cats have nuclear scintigraphy or something done to to look at hot spots for cancers. We know that uh, studies have shown that humans have uh, bone mets of tumors in 60% of cases. That's an amazing number. 60% of humans have bone mets at autopsies. Um, in cats, it's usually the appendicular uh, skeleton. And cats are well known for the metastasis of certain neoplasms 
to the digits, especially pulmonary carcinoma. But a lot of other neoplasms will metastasize and will metastasize to the uh, bones of the appendicular skeleton as well. So cats with tumors should be carefully examined for pain in the limbs, which might indicate that there is bone metastasis, not just pulmonary carcinoma. A lot of um, cats really, they metastasize to odd places. The tumors of the conjunctiva uh, like to go to the liver, and a lot of tumors like to go to the eye, and you find them in weird places. So never be surprised by the, by the location of metastases, especially bony metastases in cats. Then I said I would I'd wind up this lecture with a little discussion of osteosarcoma in the cat. It is uh, by far not as common as we see in the dog. It's very different in its location in dogs. They often arise in the, uh, the metaphysis in cats. Unlike this picture, probably not representative, they often arise in the diaphysis. They don't tend to metastasize with the rate that they do in dogs. The survival time um, for a cat with an osteosarcoma is 49.2 months versus uh, 19 weeks untreated in a dog. Now there's so many uh, great advances in the treatment of osteosarcoma in the dogs, which I think hopefully will spill over into human medicine before too long. Um, that survival time is getting much longer in the dogs, but cats naturally have a... Uh, have a longer um, median survival time. If the osteosarcoma rises in the flat bones, it tends to have a higher rate of metastasis than in the long bones, which is also opposite to the dog. So the osteosarcoma is rare and unique in cats. Well, that brings me to the end of the lecture series on cats. Um, I will shortly start working on lecture series on horses, which I have not done, which is, I think, the last major species that uh, the lectures are not available. And then I also, this year, will be adding and completing my systemic series with uh, gross pathology of the skin, gross pathology of the nervous system. So I look forward to putting those down. I really am thankful and grateful that you have spent the time with me on gross pathology of the cat. And uh, with that, I'll wish everybody uh, a wonderful day, fantastic health, and I hope you all take great care over this upcoming July 4th weekend and are safe. And uh, we'll, there will be more, uh, more lectures put up during the weekend because I'm usually, every holiday I'm here at the JPC, doing some of these lectures. Y'all have a great day now.